Okay, so all of the documents are out and I needed a couple of days to kind of center myself and think about the whole thing. Um, from what I've seen of the documents that I've seen, because I didn't watch the video where they were discussing it, I've just seen a couple of things that were emailed to me. But it kind of looks like it says the exact same thing that I have been saying. So I don't understand how it helps any of y'all in the demonization of me. So from the beginning, I have been saying that I have severe mental health issues. Y'all decided I was lying. My own family, Kathy, said that there was no history of mental health in my family, even though my own father committed suicide. In the court records, it very clearly shows that at the time I had been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder and CPTSD. That is what I have been saying all year that you guys have been denying and saying I was lying about. Kathy said that none of that existed until the murder when I made it all up to get away with it. That's not true. By the time the murder happened, I had already been in multiple mental hospitals. Um, the first time I was bake wrecked, I think was when I was 18. I had tried to kill myself uh, at 19. Um, I had spent years in and out of the mental hospitals and my mind does not work the same way that a lot of yours does. So a lot of the things that you're demonizing me for are there. It's legitimately how my mind works. Right. And it's super frustrating that nobody can understand that. Y'all spent a year telling me that my mental health disorders are all completely fictional and made up just to release these court documents stating the exact same thing that I've been saying, that I have these mental health issues. Um, the second thing is y'all are saying that, you know, I did this, that you, you're, you believe I'm the one that committed the crime and I should be in jail. Uh, the documents that I read said that he um, pled principal, which I don't really know what that means. Um, from what I've read and understand, it means that he uh, essentially took full responsibility and accountability for what happened. He acknowledged that it was entirely him that anything that I did, he made me do, that I did not um, have the full mental awareness to even understand what was going on at the time. So if he claimed principle and took full accountability for the crime and is in prison for the crime that he claimed full accountability for, what is it that you guys want from me? Because, like, it's easy to, to get into my head because my mental health is not great. It's easy to convince me of things that are a little bit outlandish. Um, I try not to let myself be reeled in, but it's hard. This year has been a year of mental abuse and attacks. I receive emailed threats all the time. Not just threats of rape and murder, but also threats of like, they keep saying that they're going to the police and they're going to have the murder investigation reopened and I'm going to be put in jail for what I did. I didn't do anything. Like, what y'all believe I did, I did not do. I don't know how we how else to explain that. Um, I did not know 
that he was going to kill her. That should be the most important thing. I did not know that he was going to do that. I did know that things were getting dangerous and that I didn't want to be a part of the situation anymore. Which is why I had tried to stay behind at my grandmother's house after my birthday dinner. And he threatened me that if I didn't get in the truck, he would kill me. Now, honestly, thinking back, like, recently thinking back on it, I think she might have already been dead uh, at that time that he threatened to kill my grandmother and me. Um, because later, when he was moving her, I remember him commenting um, about how heavy dead bodies are. But dead bodies don't, like, they don't fall into rigor mortis. They don't get heavy until hours afterwards. And my mind might have been jumping around, so it might have been hours afterwards. But in my mind, it wasn't, you know? And so I'm wondering if maybe he hadn't done some, he hadn't killed her before taking me to my grandmother's. And then when we got back, he locked me in the truck. And I think he had sex with her dead body. Um, and then came out and got me. But... I don't fully know. I don't know what happened. Like, I know he strangled her. I know he did have sex with her during. I don't know the exacts. I don't know, like, what time it happened, um, whether it was before or after. I do know that we had been arguing a lot, that I had been telling him that I wanted to just move back in with my grandmother. Um, which was also hard for me. Uh, a lot of people are saying, well, you said you didn't want to live with your grandmother. I didn't. After I moved out of my husband's, um, well, after I left my husband, um, I moved in with my grandmother and things were difficult as any adult living with their grandparent would be because she was very controlling and I was at an age where I didn't want to be controlled. Um, my mental health issues also cause a lot of not wanting to be controlled and a lot of feeling um, attacked or feeling some things that aren't aren't real. So often I would feel like I was hated. I would feel like I wasn't really wanted there. And so that that was that was a big big part of me not wanting to live with her. Um, Kenneth, had been planning what he did to Roberta. I don't know how long, but I know that he had been planning it. He was looking for somebody else with severe mental health issues that he could control afterwards. That was the whole reason that he messaged me. Because at the time, I had a Craigslist post up saying that I had these these problems. That was schizoaffective. And um, he responded to an ad saying, what, you know, explaining that I had pretty severe mental health issues. He knew exactly what he was looking for. And when he first messaged me, I was looking for a long-term relationship to replace the one that I had just left, my husband. I was looking for a man to take care of me. This year, I've received so many comments telling me I need to just find a man to take care of me. And I've already tried that route, and it's a dangerous fucking route. He told me his name was Brian. For months and months. He took me out and he treated me and I didn't know, I didn't really know anything about him because everything he was saying to me was a lie. He told me a fake name, a fake age, a fake job, a fake everything. He moved me into that house 
for um i want to say about a month and she was not there he had taken her out and put her in a hotel room to hide her to keep me convinced that he was single and wanting to be with me and i was fucking stupid and easily manipulated and didn't think anything bad could happen now he had said oh, i'll just kill her i never took it seriously because in my experience that's something that people say and not something that they do i grew up in a house hearing my father threaten to kill us literally every night it it was something that was always said and and it didn't happen until he killed himself you know in that house if you knocked on my older sister's door she threatened to kill you it it was these things were thrown around so flippantly my entire existence that it it was just an offhand stupid joke anytime it was said it never entered my mind that somebody would say that and it would be a serious thing now because i've experienced it and i know that those things that other people say is jokes flippantly over and over again some other people would use as you know they really do that now i do take these things more seriously and i get scared because i don't know the difference between what's a joke and what's real anymore even back then it was hard for me to tell what's real and what's not and when everybody is saying that i'm lying about that just because they they don't want to accept that they have spent a year harassing and mentally abusing uh, somebody with pretty severe mental health issues and i didn't lie like none of the documents that y'all have provided have shown any lies now there are things that i maybe didn't understand didn't know misremembered but i haven't like actively backtracked anything i haven't changed anything in my mind the story as it is is the way it happened and is true and is the way that i presented it now from where we go from here i don't know because i still struggle with a lot of mental health issues and i have very little support um i have so much pushing against me that it feels impossible and it feels hopeless and all of these things that these people are saying about me feel very very true and it has caused a lot of stress and a lot of a lot of anxiety in me and it's it it and i it needs to stop you know all of the documents are out you can see it in black and white you can see for yourself and then go back and listen to their stories and to, and and add it up and you'll see that they have been adding what they needed to add to make it my fault for a year and it it wasn't my fault it wasn't anything that i wanted to happen it wasn't anything that i did myself and it was a crime that somebody else has already pled full accountability for so the idea that you people are going to torture me for the rest of my life for a crime that somebody else is serving a sentence for that pled guilty like and y'all said well he didn't plead guilty until the trial no he pled guilty like immediately he never lied about it i haven't lied about it. it it hurts that so many people believe that i've lied even with the documents out there they're still saying see this proves that you murdered or this proves that you buried her this is a receipt that you went to salvation army and i 
genuinely do not remember going to the Salvation Army. Like, no matter how many times y'all tell me there's a receipt with my name on it, that memory is not in my mind. Um, I remember him digging a grave. I do not remember helping with that. I remember him burying her. I do not remember helping with that. These are not, you know, me trying to take away accountability. This is genuinely, after I saw her body, I kind of went into a weird state. And my memories for the next couple of days are very jumbled and garbled and some are gone completely. That That's not something I can control. And no matter no matter how much you guys push this information on me you're not going to be able to force me to remember these things that i cannot remember you know i'm sorry but it's just not how my brain works my brain obviously does not work like yours you have spent a year profiting off of the torture of a schizophrenic bipolar woman with CPTSD and you have been saying over and over again that 2022 is going to be the same thing another year of torture and profiting off of an extremely mentally ill woman who has no support and nobody to help her and you know it's wrong all of you that are making these videos and demonizing me when you know what the facts are, you know it's wrong. Especially my family. Especially my family. I don't have to say that my family is abusive anymore because if you go to my aunt's channel and watch her videos, you can hear the abuse in every word that she says just watch those videos and imagine saying those things to a family member struggling and and then calling yourself a loving member of the family it you might love your family but you know i was never a part of your family and you never gave a damn about anybody that wasn't in your family.